Are you lost in the chaotic whirlwind of day-to-day busyness? Do you yearn for a deeper sense of meaning and purpose in your life? Welcome to Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose, the podcast dedicated to empowering women on their journey of self-discovery and finding their true purpose through their own story. I'm your host, Brenda Simmons. Welcome to the Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose podcast. On our last episode, Bliss Sawyer mentioned a little bit about how during the day when she needed a little boost, she would take a moment to do some deep breathing. And I wanted to discuss this a little bit deeper today because it is a technique that has so many powerful benefits. And I think it's important that everybody understand what deep breathing can do for you. So to start out with, I want to share with you two different stories. So the first one has to do with when my my oldest daughter was, uh, I think she was in third grade. She she and I were talking and I said, well, what what is something that you want to do? And as far as like an extracurricular activity. And she said, well, I really want to sing. And incidentally, she's the same daughter who sings the song at the end of of every podcast. And so she says, I want to sing. So I looked into different groups that, um, you know, had children's singing groups, right? And she, I could not find anything that was near us. I wasn't willing to travel the half an hour that it, it took to get us to the nearest one. And so I decided that I would just start my own children's music group. And so it was called Upbeat Music Company. And I loved it. I did it for about five years and had all my kids join. And it was absolutely amazing. And one of the things that I did as a warm up to singing time was I would, I made it like a little competition. So I would have all of the kids take great big breath, you know, fill up their lungs. And then when they thought it was full, I'd have them breathe in a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and got to where their lungs were just totally full. And then rather than just releasing that breath out all at once, the contest was to see who could release their breath out the slowest. So it was kind of the last man standing one. And then we would do this two or three different times. And I loved doing this because I felt like it really opened up your chest cavity to receive more air so that you could, the kids could sing better. And this is a technique that I'll often use myself when I'm on my way to go to the community choir that I belong to. So I I still love doing this. And so I have found that not only does it open up your chest cavity so you can have more air, which then means that you don't have to take as many breaths, which really helps when you're singing. But I also noticed that it just had a mental effect. Like it, I just felt invigorated. I was ready to focus. I, I, it just kind of cleared my thoughts of what was going on. And I could just focus on what I was doing with my breathing. There was an element of fun though, too, because it was a contest. And so some of those kids, they could last you know, far more, far longer than, than I could. So, <laughs> so it was a really good warm up, but it had a lot of physical benefits to it as well. My second story has to do with therapy. So I am a huge proponent of therapy. And one of my favorite modalities is EMDR therapy. And my therapist, when we would start this, she would say, okay, now take a big breath and, and then start. And after a while, she would say, okay, what do you think? And, and pretty soon I realized that she was taking her cues from me to know when to say, okay, what do you think? Let's talk about, you know, what just happened. And I realized what I was doing was I would start with that big breath, but then when I was done processing, I would do another big breath. And so it was not a voluntary thing though. And I realized that I could then identify when I was ready to talk about it because I would involuntarily do this big breath. So it was kind of like my, my body saying, okay, we're beginning something and now we're ending something or we're, we're, we're transitioning. 
And so I, I thought that between those two stories, I have learned and as well with multiple times doing this um, just on my own, that breathing is really important. It is an important um, reset mechanism, is an important focus mechanism. It is, there's, there's so many benefits to taking deep, deep breaths and just clearing out your system. So I want to talk a little bit more about the benefits to deeply breathing. The first thing that it does is it triggers your parasympathetic nervous system. So now remember when Bliss was saying that when she needed kind of a reset during the day and things were going stressful, she could just take a breath and just calm down and and move on to what she needed to do. Well, that is because it that deep breath triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. That is the part of your nervous system that controls the rest and relaxation response that you have. So, and then, so really what that does is it tells your body, okay, it's time to relax. You're doing fine. You can move on to something else. You can have a reset. And in turn, this then will lower your heart rate. It lowers your blood pressure. And because of that, it can help lower your stress levels. Deeply breathing can also help decrease pain. So this reminds me of Lamaze, right? So when I was pregnant with my oldest child, I did a Lamaze class with which everybody knows that Lamaze is, has a lot to do with how you breathe. And if you focus on your breath, then that helps to reduce the pain of childbirth. But that, but deeply breathing doesn't, isn't, isn't um, only helping with childbirth pains. If you have any other pains, if you focus on your breath instead and just do that deep breathing, then it does help to trick our brains into um, into not having such a, a strong pain reaction. Because a lot of times what happens is we're so focused on that pain and we just think, oh, I've got, I've got so much pain. And, and so that which we think about grows. And so it we can actually make that pain worse. And so if we instead practice some breathing techniques, it can seriously minimize the pain that we are in. Of course, that's not like 100% across the board, you have to do what what works for you. But I would, if you are experiencing some pain, I would definitely start with um, trying some breathing techniques. Have you ever noticed when you take a big breath. There's just something about doing that that just gives you energy. And I mean, if you think about it, like when you wake up, like a lot of times what all my, and seriously, again, involuntary, I'll take, my body will take a big breath. And I know I've, I've seen so many different people do this. I think it's just a, a natural response to, okay, it's time to go. Let's get you some more energy. Let's bring some more oxygen into your body and let's let's get you going. So also because you are bringing in more oxygen, you can actually even increase the capability of your immune system to fight off different um, pathogens. So, and this is because you are bringing more oxygen to your body, which helps to heal and rejuvenate your body. And so deeply breathing on a consistent basis, not all day, but, you know, taking time out to do this seriously helps your immune system. So have you ever gone upstairs and especially if you're uh, not very um, physically fit and I'm raising my hand on this one. So all the time, this has happened to me, you climb upstairs and by the top time you get to the top of the stairs, you're totally winded, right? And so I have found a little trick that if I, you know, and when you're winded, your your body's natural response then is to to breathe deeper so that you can have that recovery time because your body is needing some more oxygen to live. So I have found though, that if I start just taking deep breaths as I'm walking up the stairs, or if I'm, if I'm doing something a little bit more um, physical, that if I start that deeper breathing before my body needs it, that I actually don't have that forced deeper breathing response that, that my body has. I, I'm able to control that. So so when we deep breathe deeply, we it helps our bodies to recover 
from that physical exertion. Okay, so those are just some benefits to taking the time out to breathe deeply. Um, I would challenge you to see if you can think of some more based on your own experience. I'm I'm sure this is not an exhaustive list. And but the the best kind of data is the kind that you create yourself. And because then it helps you to get to know your body and to know what your body needs and when. So how do you go about breathing, right? And so of course we're talking about deep breathing. Well, there's a lot of different methods. And once again, I challenge you to do some research on your own and see and some experimentation and see what works best for you at any given particular time. So I'm going to give you a few different methods, things that I have tried myself that I have found to be beneficial. So the first one is the music warm up that I I talked about earlier. But I've added something different that for me helps it to be even more effective. So rather than just starting out normally, what I'll do is try to exhale all of the old air cuz I cuz sometimes we get we we breathe normally and I I feel like some of that air just kind of it gets stagnant in there. And so I have found that if I really force that out to where I I don't have any more air in as far as me being able to push it out, then it kind of clears the way so that when I take that big breath in, I am really filling up everything with new air. And so the way in which I'll do that is I'll give a couple of different forceful breaths out and really like trying to to push that out with my chest and with my diaphragm so that so that I can get all of that air out and then I'll take that big breath and slowly 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 release it so that's number one the uh, another one that you can do is called box breathing and so this is where you breathe in for a count of four hold your breath for a count of four release your breath for a count of four and then hold that for a count of four so that's called the box breathing. And so you, you can kind of go around the different edges of that, that box to, to really focus on taking your, on, on your deep breathing. You can also cut out the holds and just do breathe in and breathe out. And you can hold that, do that for as long as you want. If it's a count of four, if, if it's a count of five, but you really want to make sure that you're filling your lungs all the way up. The another thing that you can do, and I really, really like this one is called diaphragmatic breathing. And, and I like this because it, it, it is kind of what Bliss was talking about too, making it so that when we breathe, it's not our chest rising, but it's, it's our belly. And so, and if you've noticed when you look at a newborn breathing, they don't breathe with their chest going in and out. They breathe with their stomachs going in and out. And that is a very natural way to do that. But as we get older, we kind of learn that in, to not do that and instead to use our chest muscles instead. But it's actually better for our bodies that we can get more air into our bodies if we move that diaphragm down into our bellies, allowing the air to expand our, our lungs that way. So the way you do diaphragmatic breathing is you put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly and you're going to breathe. And the reason why you're putting your hands here is so that you can feel where your air is going. Are you are, are you pushing your lungs out through your chest or are you pushing your lungs down into your belly? So you want to take a deep breath in and you want to force your diaphragm down so that your stomach is, ex is expanding, but not your chest. So you're going to breathe in, pushing that down. And then as you breathe out, you're going to do a long breath out. So this long breath, this exhale is going to be twice as long as your inhale. So a quick inhale and a long exhale. Now, if you really think about it, that's what singing is. You And, and that's one of the reasons why singing is is such a euphoric experience for so many people is because it uses this this quick breath in and a long breath out. And, and so your, your 
applying that you're triggering that parasympathetic nervous system as you're singing now of course you get emotions tied into songs and words and stuff like too that too but i've always thought that it's interesting that one of the reasons why singing especially you know at least for me feels so good is it's not just the songs it's the breathing component of singing that is so healthy so the last one i want to share with you is the wim hof method this is a newer method Again, this this has um, holding your breath components to it. So in the way in which you do it is you're going to take 30 deep breaths to capacity with your belly rising and then 30 exhales. And on that last exhale, that 30th exhale, you're going to hold your breath for as long as you can. And then once you can't hold it as anymore, then you're going to breathe in deeply and hold your breath as long as you can again. So, so holding it after an exhale and then holding it after an inhale, and that is one round and you're going to do three or four rounds of that. Now, all of these different methods, and again, this is not an exhaustive list. And so if you're finding that one of these doesn't work for you, I suggest you get online and you do some research and just try out different methods and see what does work. And, and you'll find that Sometimes you'll be in a position where one method is feels more intuitive, feels more natural, and then later a different method will be what you need. And so be open to having multiple methods being okay for you at different times. Now, if you when you do your research, you'll find that there's lots of videos, lots of how tos on how you can do this. And so again, get on there and see what it is that that works for you. The beauty about breath work is that you can do it anywhere, anytime, doesn't cost anything. You don't need any equipment. You can do it incognito. You can, you know, take some time at home and and make it a big thing. But it really is something that you can do to help yourself on any given moment. And so I hope you take the time to elevate your body through intentional deep breathing. And I think you will find that it does you a world of good. So I hope you like this podcast. Please like and subscribe to it. It really does help me out. And remember that your purpose is in your story. Until next time, take care. Celebrate your dreams, let them take flight, for you are a star, shining bright in every step you take, let your light glow be.